Okay, so there's a bunch of things that happened during the 1920s that kind of stand out to us. Um, the automobile industry grows. There's mass production. There's the assembly line um, uh, that is put in place by Henry Ford. And between those things, it really starts to change the way that Americans do business, not just in the automobile industry, but everywhere. But it starts in the automobile industry, and it creates jobs. It creates jobs that you don't need a lot of skill to do. You, need, um, you can go in as an unskilled laborer, person work on this uh, assembly line and uh, one of the things that Henry Ford did uh, with this stuff is that he paid his employees actually a really good wage and in doing so of course uh, they had money to uh, to spend and they invested it a lot of them right back into their own company um, it creates a whole industry if you think about what uh, the automobile industry is it's more than just making of cars to have a car and to be effective, you need roads. So you've got an entire you've got an entire group of people that are now getting jobs making roads. Of course, then you need, also need gas stations and you need uh, places to fuel them up. So you now you have entire groups of people who are getting jobs, uh, either constructing new uh, gas stations or filling stations around the uh, country, but also people that work in those places. Uh, so that creates jobs and new places for people there. And of course, then, uh, because people now can drive and travel uh, in a lot a different way than they could before, um, hotel industries, vacation industries, all these kinds of things start to grow as a result of what the automobile does. And it goes way, way, way beyond that. And we've got, so we have things like that that are happening here today. Um, the cell phone industry, the computer industry, those things are more than just the people that are affected who work at factories that build those things. But it's every all the new jobs and new things that are created new industries new new things that we never even thought of that were needed that are now needed because of that and those inventions and the automobile is one of those things the farmers farmers were not so lucky during the 1920s a lot of them made uh, lots and lots of money selling food to the u.s military during war so when world war one's going on um the military and the government says they need lots of food. And so the farmers actually, you know, find more land and they actually start to um, make more things and they start to grow all sorts of crops. And what they realize is that um, they can make lots, the more they make, the more money they make. Of course, when the war is over, the government doesn't need the money anymore. So now they have all sorts of food. Well, when they have a high supply and the demand isn't there anymore, the prices go down. Their solution, though, was that they were going to continue to grow that because the more they grew, they thought the more that they could sell to make up for the, the lost uh, prices. And, of course, that just made things worse. The government had been paying for all those things. That's what a subsidy is. They had paid for those things. Um, and this allowed them to expand the land and their equipment. But, of course, after the war, they had many, much more than they needed. Prohibition came about in uh, during this time period. Uh, in 1919, the 18th Amendment was passed that uh, banned the outlaw, uh, ban uh, outlawed alcohol uh, to buy or sell. Uh, so people began making their own, bootlegging. And um, this became a popular activity. Lots of people were doing it, but it really grew under organized crime. And here you have a picture of Al Capone. It's probably like the quintessential, the, you know, the, the, the picture of organized crime uh, as he made this entire industry off of... Um, making illegal alcohol and selling it and importing it from other countries that didn't had not a lot alcohol. Immigration was an issue during this time. Uh, a lot of it has to do with war. Uh, you know, we're fighting over in Europe and there's a lot of uh, people there that, um, that we're fighting against. And now when we think about immigrants coming to this country, a lot of them are coming from Europe. And so we had prejudice against those people. Uh, unemployment was a big issue because um, people were thinking that they would lose their jobs because immigrants would work here for cheaper uh, labor and so therefore that would cause people to lose their jobs so they didn't want immigrants coming over for that. So in 1921 the government passed a quota system that said that only so many immigrants could come in from the country so this free and open United States, this melting pot idea uh, is now closed and it's not like that anymore. Uh, fear of foreigners is xenophobia, and it was something that ran rampant across uh, the country at this time. Uh, and, of course, Germans were one of those groups that were frowned upon a lot because, af as uh, after all, it was World War One. it was the Germans that we were fighting. Sacco and Vanzetti were two uh, individuals who suffered from this xenophobia. 
uh, as there was a bombing and um, Sacco and Vanzetti were two uh, immigrants that were around at that time. They, they rounded them up, uh, convicted them, and put them to death for it. And um, it's later revealed that uh, most likely they were not guilty of the crimes. The Flappers, uh, the independent women from World War I. This is an image that a lot of people see. Uh, I see a lot of times on Halloween, there's a lot of people dressed up as flappers. But it comes from uh, the 19th Amendment uh, in 1920, which allows women to vote. It creates this new independence for women. Uh, there also had been working during World War I. It created new independence for them. And they become this modern woman. They cut their hair. They wear shorter skirts. They put makeup on. These are things that, uh, that you know, hadn't been like that in the past. And so this really... Uh, was saying, you know, we are women and we have power and we're just as important as men are. And that was something that maybe probably wasn't viewed that same way until the 1920s. Entertainment becomes a popular thing um, because now people have money. They have spare money. And because, um, you know, you didn't have to work six days a week and 60 hours anymore to get that kind of money, people had time on their hands. So they bought radios, they went to movies, um, you know, baseball became a big thing. Uh, Charles Lindbergh was famous uh, right here from Minnesota uh, from flying a plane nonstop solo across the, Atla uh, across the Atlantic. Um, daredevils and thrill seekers were out, you know, getting people basically to spend their money and, and it was free time and people thought this, was a, uh, this is what you did. You had extra cash and you had extra time in your hand. You went out and found something to do with it. Uh, the stock market grew during this time period. We've talked about that. Um, it's a growth of business. Um, dividends were creating uh, almost a secondary wage for people as they in invested in the uh, uh, companies. And then, of course, as those companies uh, did well, uh, they paid out dividends to the, their investors. Uh, the stock market grew in the 1920s. Why? Well, because people had the money to do it. And because they had extra money to try and do it, uh, they they said, hey, here's another opportunity for us to put money into it. There's another thing that also helped out. Um, speculation is just basically it's gambling. It's guessing, right? Um, what we're gonna, I'm going to hopefully buy a stock that's low, and when it gets really high or does well, then I can sell it and make money. That was the idea of speculation. So sometimes you won and sometimes you didn't. But buying on margin was this other piece because at this time you could buy on margin. And buying on margin at this time, meant that you could buy stock for about 10% of what it was worth. So it was a $100 stock, you only had to put $10 in. And the, basically, the, um, the traders would borrow you the other $90. Well, when the stock went up, it didn't really make a difference. If you sold it for $130, you got $40 bucks instead of $130 because you had to pay the other $90 back. However, the stock went down, that's where you were in trouble. Because not people didn't just buy what they could afford. What they did was they would go to banks and borrow the money. Then they would take uh, then they would take their money, go to the stock market, and of course buy on margin, which means they were borrowing again. And so now, when the when their stock started to fall, they not only owed money to the to the brokers, but they also owed money to the banks, and they, it was way more than they could ever afford. Uh, and this is really what's going to lead to the stock crash in 1929, and to uh, be a big part of the Great Depression. All right, so that's the 20s, um, quick and sweet. And so if you have more questions about the 1920s or any of the slides that are in here, you can go back and look at it again, or you can see me and ask me any questions.